35192. If you want to text me, alancoxshow.com. Watch the show there live. Use the keyword Polar Blast, and you can get whatever info you need to join us one week from tomorrow night for the 10th year of the Alan Cox Show Polar Blast Battle. It's our annual tubing race. Uh, the hook with this that we do every year is that three of the four people on the show will have to perform some ridiculous punishment. Obviously, the winning team avoids that, so the odds are not with us. But it's a good time. Uh, we always have discount tickets for you. They sell out quickly, though. So I don't know if we still have them, but they're $10.07. If you go to alancockshow.com, use the keyword Polar Blast. There's a link for you to buy them. If you're not on a team, you just want to come hang out. It's just a lot of fun. So we do the race. We party in the lodge. DJ Cairo spins. Thanks to Bud Light, Charles Scott Salons and Spas, Monster Energy, Statement Limousine. Prizes for the winning uh, members of the winning team. And next week, we'll have all the teams set. Next week, we use a week of to take your predictions for which team will win. And if you're correct and we pull you, from, uh, pull you randomly, you can get the winning team's prizes, too. So my team, the Coxicles, against Bill's team, Click Click Tube, against Mary's team, Snow Babies. And we'll get one last member of that team tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And then you can register uh, at the show site there to get on uh, Pound Cake's team, Barely White, which he shares with Barry White, the Boston Mills Brandywine mascot. I have to go get clothing for this. Like, I have no appropriate outdoor items. Well, we'll see how warm it's going to be and then shop accordingly. You've been outside before. I mean, yeah, but last year, was it super cold last year? No. I don't feel like it was. I mean, I feel like it was when, like 16 When we get like to that. the top of that hill, it's always very cold. But I mean, I just we're not up jeans, there for long. I and, just wore jeans and tennis shoes last year, but I, want, yeah, that's, I feel yeah. like I need to get a nice pair of boots and some snow pants. You have well, like wear boots. like an just wear like I wear jeans, but I just wear like an underlayer. Yeah. Like running mm-hmm. pants or something. Yeah. And then I wear my yeah, we, like my snow boots. Next Friday, 38 and snowing, so that's not that bad. There you go. That's not that bad at all. No. Okay. Yeah, just wear like a little two on the layers, warm side yeah. actually. Hopefully that won't jam us up. I think it'll be good. It's supposed to get down to 32, so if we get out there at nighttime. Yeah, it'll be fine. So just two layers. Okay. And my brand new coat is, you know, it's good till negative 250 degrees or whatever. Yeah, but that's not a coat you're going to wear for tubing, is it? I thought that was like more of like a going out warm coat. I don't have another warm coat. You don't? I don't have another coat. You don't have like a North Face fleece or anything like that? No. Like a handy like down? A, I have like um. <laughs> I guess if I wore like a hoodie under it or some Under Armour, I could wear like a, I have like a thinner zip up coat, but that's. I just bought a balaclava. I'm wondering if I should what? just wear that. You have bought a baklava coat? I bought a balaclava. Oh. A ball of what? You know what a balaclava is? No. It's a thing that covers your whole face except for your eyes. Oh, a mask. Oh, oh, a mask. mask. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we call it a mask. It's not a mask. I'm not dressed up as a kitten. <laughs> it's a mask. <laughs> It's a ski kitten. mask. No, ski mask. It has a word. It's a balaclava. Is it's it the not, one that has yes. that pointy nose? Maybe. No, it's called it's called a ski mask. Ski masks are made of like ski hat mask material. is like wool and it yeah. you got eye yeah, holes and a mouth mask, hole cut out. Ski masks have evolved over the years and they can be both. Listen, let him wear his baklava mask and he'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you love phyllo dough, I'm gonna smell delicious. Honey, so like, it's, oh, it's honey and nuts up here. Oh my <laughs> goodness, what is this? A little sticky, but that's okay. So the Polar Blast is next Friday night. Tomorrow night, Mary's doing her final Friday. I saw that Scene Magazine did a very nice write-up of the uh, first look at the All Saints Public House. Yes, it looks Formerly great. the this, formerly the that, formerly mm-hmm. the this. It's been a hundred Formerly <laughs> Snickers, whatever the hell it was. It was the Battery Park Pub. Redstone. Redstone. Redstone is Redstone, when I used to perform. And then Graffiti, and then Battery Park Pub. There you go. And now All Saints Public House. They put in a ton of time and effort into it, and it looks amazing if you go to that Cleveland Scene um, article. And they kind of lay it out, what they want it to be and everything, and then um, the upstairs still in the the same spot if you've been to any Final Fridays before. The upstairs um, private bar is going to have awesome seating. Everything's brand new. They got a stage, spotlights, everything. It's going to be awesome. I'll read it to you as written. Comfy couches, multiple large screen TVs, and a second bar mm-hmm. make the upstairs space more conducive to groups, private affairs, and events like trivia or comedy nights. Boom. So, if I'm taking this as written, and if I understand them correctly, and I think that I do, 
If you're someone who wants to engage in a private affair, and frankly, who would want to make it public? Uh, you'd want to call them. Now, mixed messages, sure. You're trying to have a private affair. Don't know that you're going to do it at a place called the public house. Nevertheless, <laughs> call them. Maybe they've got a little uh, intimate nook. Find yes. out, right? Maybe uh, Mary Santora's Final Friday could be a little meat cute. Yeah. For two, I've said this before. I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that two people... I mean, what's a better connective tissue between two strangers than a similar sense of humor? Laughter. Laughter, the best medicine. Brings people together. And there's a bunch of people that come to these shows by themselves. Yeah. Eventually, they're going to end up together. Mm -hmm. These stupid losers that come to these comedy shows by themselves. No, no, (laughs) no, stupid losers. I appreciate all of you and your happiness. Stupid losers. No, no, no. Hey, just because you're a stupid loser doesn't mean that you can't find love and you're meet somebody. You're creeping everybody out. You're there by yourself. You're making everybody feel weird because everyone's like, hey, is the seat taken? And you're like, no, I'm here by myself. And they're like, well, I don't want to sit with you now. I thought you had a girl coming, but you're just by yourself. What's with that mustache? Just because you've got a lazy eye and you got that baklava on your face doesn't mean you can't sit there and have a good time. <laughs> well, I mean, and tomorrow. Are you that seat for your ponytail? No? Okay. Tomorrow <laughs> is uh, special because the bar isn't even open yet. So tomorrow's like a soft opening where we're going to do the show in, with the price of admission, which is like $15. It's not bad get, for one person. If that's you're not bad for loser. one person if you're a stupid <laughs> loser. And you know how hard it is to cook for one? Yeah. Guess what? Yeah, yeah. All Saints Public Thanks House, board. free food tomorrow. So at 6.30, what? it's free food because they're doing like a little test of their kitchen. Uh, you, get to, you get to test all the little apps and all the different things. So free they food at 6.30. Doesn't mean they can't <laughs> charge for it. We're not. You buy, you buy $15 ticket, you get food, appetizers, and a comedy show. On the topic of being a single loser, though, <laughs> going out on stupid I, loser, stupid loser. I, I went to a comedy. It was a, an award show at Hilarities. Like they had it. I think it was like a year you or two a ago. Date. Yes, but that was, it, he was straight. <laughs> he was a straight date, and I purposely didn't want to go because I didn't want to be a stupid loser to go to a comedy show by myself. So, no, comedy well, is like one of the things you comedy and movies because everybody's facing the same way. You're mm-hmm. quiet, you're laughing, like you're not really interacting with people. I so went to, to see by Maria yourself. Bamford by myself. Yeah, I go to yeah. love. I it. love going to shows by myself. Same. And then you also can. The, the best thing I love going anywhere by myself because the best thing about it is if you want to stay longer, you can stay longer. If you want to leave, you just leave, mm-hmm. and you don't have to check with people. And it's the best. You're not I really a that. check with people kind of guy though. When you go places, you want to leave immediately. Yeah, I know. And it messes but up other I, people's plans. But if I take <laughs> someone with me and I don't like then I have to check with people and I'll let someone know if they're there they're with me but if I go by myself I'm gonna ghost Take if I off. want yeah, yeah. Like but in. you can do that MarySantora.com for tickets or there's a link on my Instagram Mary Santora comedy Twitter it's on every type of social media there are nine tickets left and I would like to say that I don't actually think you're a stupid loser if you go to a comedy show. Don't backpedal. By yourself. Don't backpedal. I, I'm just, that's humor. That's you're, my humor. You know, you can be a little loser. rough on people. And don't worry, Bill's humor won't be there tomorrow. So you can go and no, enjoy other people's humor. Hockey game. Nine. Now, if you go to a hockey game by yourself, now you're Nine. a stupid loser. Yeah, we got the Monsters game tomorrow night. So many things going on tomorrow night. It's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be free food there, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. For you guys. And you don't get any of it. I won't eat one one chicken <laughs> popper. <laughs> Anytime he gets anything close to his mouth, I'm going to slap it out of his yeah. hand. Like, <laughs> no, get that chicken tender out of your mouth. Chicken tenders are for closers. That's right. And that's so not me. Slider is a mascot, Smack. <laughs> not for you. <laughs> you don't get to eat that. Mm, what type of food is Stripper that? Scott Put says, that cupcake down. Put that pizza down. Stripper Scott says, as somebody who goes to multiple comedy shows, Per week by himself. I feel personally attacked by Bill's stupid loser <laughs> comments. Multiple shows a week? Yeah. He goes to Polk Show every Tuesday. He goes to Polk Show. He goes to Craft Last I mean, every week. With oh, all yeah, due respect. Monday. East End every Thursday. It's a little Just much. 9 p.m. It's free. It's very fun. So, what are you saying is Bill has a point? No. Uh, I mean, he's. <laughs> uh, he's got other things going on, I guess, but boy, well, that's, that's why a, I did the disclaimer. I, a lot of comedy. It's got Good guy. Okay. He's a nice guy. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover have confirmed that they will return for Lethal Weapon 5. That's what we wanted. I guess We're Danny like, Glover oh. doesn't have a... Danny Glover probably never had a problem with Mel Gibson being an anti-Semite and a racist, right? Well, because he's they come worked from a together for a long time. Yeah. He comes from a different generation where he's, one, used to it, and two... You, you still don't want your co-worker dropping the N-word, though. I mean, in... No. But you're used to it, and you're no. just kind of like shut down. 
You just go, yeah, this is what this is what all white people are to me. But Danny Glover is also like a, I mean, for an older guy, he's still very much in the mix. Danny Glover is like an activist, legit activist. And I know it's a very popular franchise, but I feel like when was the last one with Joe Pesci and Chris Rock? That was, was like twenty years ago. Yeah, it was, it's been a long time. And so also, twenty years later, wasn't they're gonna... he trying to retire in the first one? <laughs> the one that he's was literally too old years for ago? this shrimp. <laughs> More than 30 years after the first one, still the best one, um, they're going to work on Lethal Weapon 5. It's going to be Richard Donner back to direct, Mel Gibson, and Danny Glover. Now, if they could get Joe Pesci back to do this, that would be the real, the real hook. I don't want it's not hard that. getting Joe Pesci to come out of retirement when you go Scorsese, De Niro, Pacino, Maniscalco. You know, you dangle all those vowels in front of him. Mm-hmm. Of course he's going to come back. But with this one, I mean, in Lethal Weapon 4, Chris Rock was the hot new detective that was dating Danny Glover's daughter. Right. Now now he's old enough to be a grandpa. <laughs> right. So, like, <laughs> I just... Right. What's the storyline here? Why, why is an 80-year-old going to start chasing people around? Yeah, who's going to take the... I don't know. You know, every time they want to revamp these franchises, it always follows the, the script line of... Where they're passing the torch to the young guys, Ooh. so I'm sure it'll have two, uh, like younger Plus, actors it was a playing. TV. Up, huh? It was a TV show for a while, right? Yeah, with Damon Wayans. Mm-hmm. Lethal Finale is the working title of the film. He said uh, it's, it's dark. It's going to be dark. Lethal Injection. <laughs> yeah, that show should be lethal called Lethal Injection. It, if it's the last one. Danny Glover's 73, Mel Gibson's Jeez, 64. These are old people. Yes. But it is amazing that people are just kind of like, eh, Mel Gibson, bring him back, whatever. All's forgiven. All is for Gibson. Come back. We don't <laughs> yeah, care what I, you said. As much as Merton they... Merton Riggs. I feel like it's one of those things where Hollywood's bringing him back, but nobody's like excited to see him in movies. Like He was in Daddy Daycare 2, or no, in Daddy's Home 2, and people didn't go see that movie. And I think people were kind of skeeved out by him being in that movie. Yeah, I just wonder, I mean, I guess. Clearly, they're appealing to people who are old enough to remember Mm -hmm. those earlier films, right? Do you not know he made The Passion? Yeah, he did, which is why he doesn't need money. I'm sure he wants to still do creative things, but... Is he a Scientologist, too? No, he's a a hardcore, like, he's like a fundamentalist Catholic. Uh, Is a fifth lethal weapon movie a creative thing? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Bill. Well, it takes writers, and mm. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, as dumb as the dumbest movie you can think of is still a creative endeavor. Mm. And I'm looking at you, Ernest Saves Christmas. Easy. All right, of all the Ernest movies to attack. <laughs> What's the Christmas. worst Ernest movie? Ooh, my Ernest goes to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, it's a thing. Isn't Not it? Slam Dunk Ernest. Oh, 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 oh. Ernest goes oh, to Africa. Oh, oh. Ernest goes to Africa is problematic. It's, I was gonna say it seems like it doesn't hold up. I've never <laughs> seen it. All right. Well, one of the Just Google the Jim Varney's already dead, so you can't get canceled. But my God, there's like a 10 minute scene where he's wearing blackface. Yeah. for a long time, and every joke is just as bad as the last. One of the um, one of the still shots they'll give you on Google is him in blackface. Mm-hmm. Ernest goes to Africa. You need a drink. Hey, you. At your service, Saeed. Service is my middle name. That's him. Pretending to be like That's an Indian Ernest. guy, right? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. actually, my middle name is Garala. True, Doan. Come over here. He crawls over on hands and knees. Oh, what is your desire, oh great one? I'd like scotch and water. Will that be with ice, oh anointed one, who spittle is sacred born? <laughs> anyway, Jim Varney had a great voice, though. Oh, he yeah. had a great voice, you know? Hey, Vern. <laughs> yeah, Vern. the whole thing. I mean, um, so yeah, Ernest goes to Africa. Yeah, that's, very problematic. I'm say that's the, the worst one. I like there was a guy, and I don't know where this was, but it made the news of a guy who robbed a bank in blackface. And they had, a, obviously, the security camera shot from behind the teller. It was a PNC branch. And no one's fooled. Like, the cops immediately go, it's a white guy in blackface. Uh, this is the yeah. guy we're looking for, you know. <laughs> and it's so bad that you can still make out exactly what the guy looks <laughs> like. So it didn't diminish the ability to positively identify the guy at all. Wait, he just thought, I'm a, if I put shoe polish, they'll think a black guy did it. You know. So wait, he was wearing just 
blackface, or he had a he had a, like a cap and like a scarf or something. A baklava. But he had a baklava. A balaclava, you sons of bitches. A mask. Ski mask has a mouth hole. If you do not, I'm talking about. Listen. Yes, they not, do. Not right. all of them. Not well, all of them. Because I right. had ski nope. masks as a kid, and I was like the ones that didn't have a mouth hole. Mouth hole. Yes, those mouth are called hole. balaclavas. Well, then I had balaclavas, but we called them ski masks because this is America. Mijo. If you don't come with a mask made of baklava, <laughs> <laughs> you just eat it as you're going down. I'd be so upset with you. <laughs> I'll be at the top. I'll be at the top of the hill, and there'll be like birds migrating back from <laughs> someplace yeah, warm, eat. pecking at my face. Little crows resting yeah, on your shoulders. Mask. That'll make you more uh, intimidating if you right. had a bunch of crows. Google balaclava. Mm-hmm. Just Google it, and then look at the pictures for the definition of balaclava. Because there is a picture okay. of a ski mask. I'm just telling you that how I understand them is you can only see the eyes. Well, there's mouth hold balaclava. Oh, I've seen these. $69 yeah. yes. for one. Of course one. you've seen them. They're ski masks. Nice. This one has tentacles. <laughs> you can get an octopus knit one. Right, but if you, uh, what I'm saying is if you order a balaclava, you know specifically what you're getting. If I ordered a ski mask, I have a different thing in my head. I wouldn't order that. So, yeah, okay. I guess they're the same thing. I'm just saying that if you if I order one, I feel like it's going to look different. A balaclava, also known as a balaclava helmet, or a bali a, or ski mask. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> it's All in right. the same definition. Okay, fine. All right. I sit I corrected. Want, I want the ugly doll one. Mary, look at this one over here. Tell me how creepy I would be going Ew! down that hill. No. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with you? I, I, like the, I like the Cthulhu one. Cthulhu. The, 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 the octopus beanie. Yeah, that's what I said. Get little tentacles coming mm -hmm. off your face. Yeah. Looks like a uh, Oh, Etsy, Davey is there Jones, anything right? you can't do? Yeah, right. Davy Jones. From Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. I love those movies. I gotta Caribbean. see one of those. Oh, they're so they look good. pretty good. They're right? on uh, Disney Plus. You can watch them all there. First one's oh, yeah. great. Second yeah. one's great. Third one starts to taper a bit, and then uh, you don't waste your time after that. What's the tipping point where you go? Eh, I'm not feeling this anymore. Three. Three. No, mm -hmm. but what is the moment? Uh, it's just long, and it's they like oh, takes... they play out they the same long? jokes. No, oh. the first ones make maybe two hours. The second one's a little bit longer. The third one's pretty long. And the third one's long. real long, and you don't even see Jack Sparrow till like an hour and a half into the movie. Because well, he's in David Jones' locker. I know, but it's annoying because that's the only reason you like going to see those movies. Nobody cares about Will Turner. It's pretty hot, though. David Jones' locker. Is this like a, a high school Pirates of the Caribbean? Yes. Okay. He shoves him in his locker. <laughs> I don't see... Try getting out of Davy Jones' locker. I'll be back after football practice. <laughs> no, the first one is, is pretty great. I would I would recommend. The first one's see, great. See, Kira Knightley's too bony for me. She's also, like, supposed to be 17 in the movie or 16 or something like that. That's, so. that's going to put me in the no column. But no, watch the movie. It's a good movie. Orlando Bloom. Gorgeous. Ugh. But they don't show his uh, rod or anything. Isn't no. he famously a uh, hawk? sword fighting. Yeah. Even flaccid. He and then Johnny Depp Jay pretending Depp. to be Keith Richards doesn't he's got, blow smoke oh up. No, God. he's he's very good in that role. He's really good. Especially in the first one where it's just, it's it's new and it's fun. It's a backstory. It it's great. It gets old, yeah. It gets old. It's very well tied together. It's all awesome. It's hard for me to watch movies with actors I've seen naked. Why? Because that's all I think about. Yeah, but you see all of them <laughs> naked. Like How do you ever watch a movie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you haven't seen all of them naked. I haven't. He gets pings, though, when a celebrity's naked. So it stands to reason that sooner or later, the number of movies you could watch would diminish to zero. On a long enough timeline, everybody's movie life expectancy <laughs> goes to zero, right? If he gets a ping every time a celebrity dong pops out, you got to go like, well, can't watch any more Kevin Spacey movies. I haven't seen him naked ill. Is it wrong of me to really, really miss Kevin Spacey? No. What a goddamn great actor. It's, I was clicking through the other night and something was on, American Beauty, which is not one of my favorite movies of his, mm -hmm. but he's so good he's in everything. Good. He's a great actor. But he's, Margin call he's about, the, the, about the meltdown of the financial system. He's a pro, one of the main guys in that. Did you love Kevin Spacey? I wish that he hadn't jammed everything up. Have you been following at all uh, the R. Kelly case and how now his live-in girlfriend is now coming forward and telling everything why people don't speak out against R. Kelly? was because he was blackmailing them and all the videos he was recording of them, he was making them do things like them molest their cousins or oh like their God. little nieces or nephews on camera. So he was like, if you speak out about me, he was like, I'm gonna throw you Take under you the bus too. Yeah, wow. I was like, oh my gosh, you're evil and diabolical. Like for somebody who can't read, you're you a mastermind. You don't need to know how to read mm -hmm. to work a camera. Sound like fake scenarios that they put up on Pornhub. 
Yeah. You but, need to molest your uncle to get out of here. But he was making people do that, and that's why no one, uncle. no one spoke up about him. Yeah, not father in the text. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, WMMS Weather. Hey guys, chilly tonight with temperatures in the 20s. Could see a few flurries for tomorrow. Light.